Before I start my presentation, I want to send a special thanks to two ladies, to Mrs. Johanna Erbacher from the Vogel Communication Group in Würzburg, but also to Mrs. Beatrix Stagel from the New, Gener New Generation Network in Berlin. Both ladies are doing a phenomenal job and thank you very, very much for your great support and also thank you very much for the opportunity to make, to do this webinar together with Industrial Generation Network. Facts about bolting applications in the industry. Regular inspections and maintenance are necessary in order to avoid costly system failures and to ensure oper operability. Checking the preload is an essential test criterion because self-loosening of bolt joints is a high safety risk. That means short and therefore expensive inspection intervals on ball joints. The knowledge of the real preload force time behavior enables the design of low maintenance or maintenance free bolt connections. Low maintenance or maintenance free bolt connection, that means operating costs can be reduced through longer inspection intervals. Checks can be reduced. Low maintenance or maintenance free bolt connection means either operating cost of bolting applications in the industry can be significantly optimized. Torque controlled tightening. Where does the torque value originate come from? First, there are some regulations. For example, the EN14399 or the DUST021. It shows you the torque values for, diff for the different size of the bolts. But also bolt manufacturers uh, recommend uh, torque values and these recommendations from the bolt manufacturers can be used as a technical specification. But also torque values are calculated after norms and standards, like here in the oil and gas industry. We know one lady who can do that very well. She's a brilliant engineer. It's Mrs. Beate Schäfertig Schäfertig uh, from Mülheim an der Ruhr. You see underneath her email address if you have a need for that. Why can ball joint fail? First, by incorrect design or by wrong calculation. Secondly, the quality of the bolts and nuts is not okay. The thread tolerances are too big. As, uh, because of slight inclination of the nut contact surface, or reaction problems, or lubricant uh, problems that you have the wrong coefficient of friction. The preload is the sacred measure. When tightening bolted joints, a, spe a specified control variable such as torque angle of rotation or force is initiated. The goal is always to apply the same and permanent preload from bolt to bolt and to maintain, to maintain it permanently. The purpose of bolted joint is to connect two or more components in such a way that they act as one component under any, op any operating forces. The easiest way to measure the preload is by the length of the bolt. The aim of bolting is that each individual bolt joint on an application is pulled apart for the same length. In principle, what sounds simple, is actually a complex process. Because in order to achieve this goal, different influencing factors must be taken into account. These influencing factors are shown here on the Ishikawa diagram. So you see influencing factors like um, the friction, so that means the lubricant. You can see uh, um, uh, the uh, losses through settlement, components, engineering, manufacturing, but also the tool itself. Yeah, the tool or the tool method. So for that reason, the VDI made the following statement. VDI is the uh, Association of German Engineers. However, the VDA says, 
The high standard set for industrial bolting in terms of process capability and legal safety requirements are already becoming higher today and are predetermined to become even higher in the future. As early as during the planning phase, the responsibility for choosing the right bolting technology to meet the respective bolting case is delegated to developers. That choice has an immediate effect on the technology to be used, process and quality assurance and final product reliability, while all these is subject to profitability pressure. Since 1st February 2050, there is a guideline from the VDI VDE called VDE VDI 2862 Part 2. Minimum requirements for applications of fastening system and tools. Application in plant construction, mechanical engineering, equipment manufacturing, and for flange connections under pressure boundary. This guideline is available in German and in English. So what does the VDI 2862 part two says? First, if you want to tie up nuts and bolts, you have to categorize them in the risk categories. There are three different risk categories, category A, B, and C. Category A means if a bolt joint fails, there is a risk to danger to life and limb or to the environment. Risk category B means if a bolt joint fails, there is a risk of operational malfunction or system shutdown. Category C means um, there is a low non-critical risk. So if you categorized all your nuts and bolts to different risk categories, then for each risk category, there are minimal requirements. Here, for example, category A, high risk. Min the minimum requirements for applications of fastening system and tools are, first, you need a directly measured control factor, but also a directly measured monitoring factor. The tool system has, uh, needs a redundant design, but this can be also be achieved with a plausibility check. Control factor and monitoring factor must not be identical. In other words, that means you need two physical sizes, one for the control factor and a different one for the monitoring factor. And you have to document all the complete process. Fastening results made available for further processing. The minimum requirements for the risk category B are you need a directly or indirectly measured control factor. You need also a directly or indirectly measured monitoring factor. Control factor and monitoring factor must be available Fastening results made available for further processing. That means you have to document. And also here, you need, the tool system needs two different physical sizes for the control factor and the monitoring factor. Now, uh, uh, the last one, the uh, risk category C, the minimum requirements are only a directly or indirectly measured or acting control variable. So that means you don't need any documentation. How can you fulfill the guideline VDE 2862 part two? First, you need an intelligent hydraulic pump, which fulfills the requirement also in aspect of industry 4.0. We call this pump the eco to touch If you already have a standard EcoPump, you can retrofit uh, uh, this pump into an eco to touch pump. You just have to implement the intelligent touch control unit. Also, you need standard hydraulic torque wrenches. Standard hydraulic torque wrenches are possible to get 
with low clearance ratchet link tools or square drive tools for, uh, for using st uh, standard nuts and for standard nuts and arm nuts. But with also with a removable angle sensor. By the way, Hytalk has since 1969 the widest range of hydraulic torque tools. We have very small hydraulic torque tools beginning from 50 newton meter, but also very big ones up to 190,000 newton meter. And here you see two pictures of very huge hydraulic power tools. Here on the left side, you see the high 60 XLCT. It's a low clearance ratcheting tool. And here, uh, here is hex size 240 millimeter. So you see, I can put my head through. And on the right side, you see the biggest hydraulic torque wrench, the Avanti 130. This tool has a three and a half uh, inch square drive and a performance of up to 190,000 Newton meter. It's a pity that we don't sell this kind of tools every day. Now let us, uh, let's go back to the Directive 2862 Part 2, Minimum Requirements for Application of Fastening System and Tools for Ball Joints of Risk Class A and B. What you should do at least is use at least the bolting method DGD. DGT stands for Torque Controlled Angle Monitoring Tightening because that is also the way how you get ball joints to talk to. In the DGT, torque controlled angle monitoring tightening process, the target unit is the torque. But a short video says more than a thousand words. So what you see here on the video is on the left side, our hydraulic torque tool Avanti 3. It's a one inch tool. The performance is up to 4,100 Newton meter. And we want to tie uh, nuts with the hex size 46 millimeter. You see on the tool, there is a bow on the tool. The bow is a reaction arm. So you need a reaction arm and mostly also a backup wrench to tighten the bolt accurate and process safe. Now what we are doing here is we want to tighten up this uh, nut by 1650 Newton meter, but beginning from a rotation angle starting torque of 600 Newton millimeter, the tool should say how much angle it's necessary to achieve the desired torque of 1650 Newton meter. For each bolting run, you will get a documentation as a graphic, but also as a text report. And here you can see 1,650 Newton meter was the desired torque. And beginning from 600 Newton meter to 1,650 Newton meter, 62 degrees angle was necessary to achieve the desired torque. Now I show you a second video about DGD. And now the big difference is, it's also the Avanti free hydraulic torque wrench, but you don't see any reaction arm, but also not any backup wrench. So it is possible to work without reaction arm and without a backup wrench, safer, faster, and simpler. And here again, the, uh, the process. 1650 Newton meter is the target torque. The rotation angle starting torque is here, 600 Newton meter. And here now, from 600 Newton meter to 1650 Newton meter, an angle of 68 degrees was necessary. The good thing is, the Eco to Touch has an, uh, has a st has an a statistic model inside. So you can see all, uh, all bolting runs, all curves in one diagram. Here on the left side, you see all curves which was done with non-rotating safety washers, so without reaction arm and without backup wrench. I will explain the safety washers later. And on the right side, you see all curves with reaction arm. But also, you see the curves. Yeah. Uh, excuse me, uh, the, um, the text report. 
if you see the first three columns, so 1,650 newton meter was reached, beginning from 600 newton meter to 1,650 newton meter, the first uh, the first port needed 67 degrees, the second one 61, and the third one 69 degrees. Now imagine you have tightened a certain number of ball joints with the DGD torque controlled angle monitoring tightening method and, there, and thereby determine that with some ball joints the angle of rotation value is more than plus minus 30 percent of the mean deviative. Then it is clearly recognizable that these ball joints are not reliable and that it is the best to replace them. Here the bolt starts talking to you. This procedure tells you, is my bolting run process safe or not? But how about saving cost in, and increasing quality to reduce costs and increase quality at the same time? The good thing is, standard bolted joints bear a great, so far, untapped potential. The only thing what you have to do is, you have to change your bolting method. What bolting method you should use? You should use the hydraulic yield point controlled tightening. The yield point controlled tightening is very popular in the industry, especially in the car industry. The car industry developed this yield point controlled tightening method some decent ago. What is the principle of the yield point control tightening? If you tighten a nut, yeah, yet then you elongate the board, but also you get torsional stress as a result of the thread friction. Now the sporting system has to, uh, should recognize the material's yield point. And as soon as the, uh, uh, the bolting method sees the material's yield point, the tool will stop from turning. And immediately after the preload is applied, up to 50% of the torsion, Yeah, is reduced because of the elastic spring back effect. And that means the yield point controlled preloaded connection regains an elastic condition. Again, it regains an elastic condition and that is very important to know. The Yield point, right, yield point control tightening means you get only to the material's yield point. Fact is, hydraulic yield point controlled tightening. Ball joints can never break. There's always sufficient elasticity. That all, means always sufficient reserve in the ball joint. And also, this uh, uh, yield point right, Tightening, uh, you can read uh, in textbooks. For example, yeah, uh, Schraubverbindung von Wiegand Klos Tomala. Yeah. Wiegand Klos Tomala says bolts with grades 8.8 to 12.9 have sufficient toughness properties. They can, in general, be preloaded into the partially plastic deformation range without any risk. Operational durability of the connection is significantly improved during the tightening. Because of the whoop, elastic spring back. This releases stress reserves for later operational loads. And also the a uh, uh, German Association of Bolting, Deutscher Schraubenverband, says about the yield control tightening method, it has two features. First, the bolts are still in the elastic area, 
Springback effect. And secondly, you have enough load reserves. How can, how, can, how can it work, hydraulic yield point controlled tightening in practice? Yes, you need at first hydraulic torque wrenches. The good thing on the hydraulic torque wrenches, especially on high torque hydraulic torque wrenches, is they have a low radius. So you can use them for very narrow application. Secondly, hydraulic torque wrenches they have big power from 60 newton meter up to 190,000 newton meter. So you have a big energy source also to tight big bolts into the yield point. Secondly, you need an intelligent pump unit, which we call the eco to touch. And third, on the hydraulic torque wrenches, you need removable angle sensors but also word, uh, video says more than thousand words here we want to tight ball joints m30 which is hex size 46 millimeter yield point controlled tightening so you see um, you can see uh, the avanti free with reaction arm and you can see the ball joint is open the hydraulic torque wrench idles the first few strokes. Yeah. So it needs a little while. The reaction arm wrapped against the next nut. Yeah. And now you see the blue curve. The blue curve shows the torque. And now you see also the red curve. The red curve is the derivative and shows the differential quotient of torque traveled angle. If the differential quotient becomes smaller, this is an indication for the pump that the yield point has been reached. And also you get for each bolting run a documentation as a graphic and as a text protocol. Yeah. <coughs> so I show you in the next video, yield control tightening, a ball joint M30 hex size 46, now without reaction arm and without backup wrench. And also you can see here the Avanti free. Yeah. So you see you get how, how easy it is to get into the program. You just put the button on the remote control of the eco to touch pump. And you see the ball joint is open. The hydraulic torque wrench idles the first few strokes. Uh, yeah, and it runs going back and forward. And now you see again the blue curve. The blue curve is the torque, and the red curve is the derivative and shows the differential quotient of torque traveled angle. If the differential quotient becomes smaller, again, this is an indication for the pump that the yield point has been reached. Oh, and of course, for each botting run, you get automa an automatic documentation by graphic and by a text report. So, because of the statistic model in the eco to touch you can see all curves in one diagram. And I mean, these three curves, yield point controlled curves, are perfectly, yeah? And they saw the yield point. And also on the text graphic, you can see the linear sloops, the, the torque value, and the angle value. Yeah? So just in case you never did, um, you never did, yield point controlled tightening before, but you want, then please try it on your original application. How is the procedure to test this tightening method, yield point, yield point control tightening? At first, you take new nuts and bolts. On the new nuts and bolts, you take a zero measurement. Then you install these bolts into your original application. 
And then you start to tighten them up, yield point controlled tightening. And then when, uh, when tightening bolted joints into the yield point, the bolted joints are preloaded into the partially plastic deformation. That is normal. That means the bolt is a little longer. So, and then you open the bolt again, and then you make a measurement of the untightened bolt, untightened bolt. And you see here by the first bolt, the zero measurement was 182.08. And the untightened bolt length was 182.22. So the, uh, the bolt joint is a little bit longer, but that is normal by yield point control tightening. How much should the bolt have been elongated to zero length? The answer is within RP 0.2% or two per thousand. This means if the bolt has lengthened permanently by approximately 0.2% after this one was tightened yield point, yield point controlled, the bolt has actually seen the elastic limit. The, the bolt has seen the yield point and that is the proof. By the way, to figure out what is the plastified clamping length, here you see uh, uh, this picture, which tells you uh, uh, the elastic plastic clamping length for bolts and for threaded studs. You know? Now, we, uh, 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 I show you some practical ex uh, examples. So we did yield point controlled tightening on tower bolts for a wind power uh, for, uh, for for wind power turbine. That was big to uh, big bolts M64. 10.9 and we did them all yield point controlled tightening and you see on this picture we need 18,805 newton meter to get that uh, bolts into the yield point and here you see the complete documentation of that tower section of the wind power uh, general uh, wind power turbine and you see there is a scatter of torque due to the scatter of linear sloops. That is quite normal, but all bolts have seen the elastic limit, the yield point. So it was very process safe. The statistic model, which is also in the, in the equal to touch, yeah, says something or shows here the example yield controlled tightening. The evaluation of the values applied individually from bolt to bolt, like the linear scope, the torque, and the angle of rotation. Also, any process failures are clearly recognizable. You can see the reason of the failure, the consequence or result of the failure, and the location of the process failure. And that is a very powerful tool. The advantage of hydraulic yield point control tightening is the tightening factor alpha r is 1.0. Uh, so if you, if you want to calculate nuts and bolts, you can take alpha r as 1.0 in your calculation. You get the maximum preload force it's, uh, uh, it's an independent uh, bolting method of friction values. You don't need customized, customized bolts. The bolts are reusable. Yes, that is true. If you tight up a bolt by yield point controlled tightening the first time, you can reuse them again. It's no problem because a bolt will not break. You can select bolts and nuts from different bolt manufacturers, you have the lowest relaxation and it is an accepted method. It meets all the requirements of VDI 2862 part two. The documentation with the help of the eco to touch is in the, sen in the sense of industry 4.0, yeah, digitalization. You have a perfect quality control and due to the high preload level, 
the joint's fatigue strength also increases. And it's a process reliable tightening. The hydraulic yield point controlled tightening method is accepted by the DNVGL in Hamburg since March 2019. Also here you see a picture what we did on a wind power turbine where we did yield point control tightening. And with the yield point control tightening, it is possible that bolted joints can have smaller dimensions. The number and diameter of bolts can be reduced. You can, uh, uh, standard bolts can be reused. You don't need customized bolts. Uh, you can mix up bolts and nuts uh, from different uh, manufacturers. It's certified, you fulfill all directives, you have a perfect quality control, and you can use your standard hydraulic torque wrenches. Conclusion, with the help of the hydraulic yield point controlled tightening, components can be designed more easily in smaller dimension and thus be produced in a much more cost efficient way. Low maintenance or maintenance free standard bolted joints are possible with the standard tools. And the purpose of bolted joints is always achieved. Two or more components are connected in such a way that they act as one component under any operating forces. And also, even coated components can be fastened in a process reliable way with the help of the hydraulic yield point controlled tightening. The University of Offenburg, they made a very interesting research and development project. And these research and development project was supported by the German government. And they showed their results uh, to an, uh, at, an, at an ASME Congress in Phoenix, Arizona in November 2016. Here you see the link. If you are interested in that results, yeah, you can get them. But it's proved that coated components can be fastened the process reliable way by using hydraulic yield point controlled tightening. The equal to touch can do yield point control tightening, but uh, the equal to touch can do more. It can do torque control tightening torque controlled angle monitor and tightening, torque controlled yield point monitor and tightening, torque and angle control tightening, and preload control tightening. As a special feature, I want to explain you um, a special uh, uh, maintenance method. It calls DDV star. It's a term by angle method, and but we call it star. Why it is so? Here is the following scenario. Imagine that you tighten ball joints with, for example, 1650 Newton some time ago, for example, two or three years ago. Now you parameterize the hydraulic bolting system with approximately half of the tightening torque at the time. This is the rotation angle starting torque. And in our example, I would say 1000 Newton meter. Afterwards, starting at 1000 Newton meter, the hydraulic bolting system should turn the bolt only by five or, or six degrees further so that the bolt nut comes from the fret static friction into the fret sliding friction. This procedure is a recognized measurement method in the context of VDE 2645 part 3 PCT. PCT stands for Process Capability Test, which is a capability test for Baltic technology measured machines. The aim of a PCT for bolted joints is the evaluation and documentation of the quality capability of fastening process under serious production conditions. DDV star is a recognized measurement in the context of the PCT, process capability test. This states 
that a repeatable measurement of the additional torque can be carried out with the target value of the preload force. This helps to determine the current status of the bolted joints, especially in long-term observation in combination with other measure, measurement methods such as the length measurement of bolted joints. Because, for example, the friction behavior of the respective bolt joint may have changed over a certain period of time. That sounds complicated, <laughs> but it can be done with standard hydraulic torque wrenches. You need a removable angle sensor and you need an intelligent pump unit like the Eco to Touch. And also here, a video about DDB star. So, the, nut, uh, the bolt is still tightened or was tightened by 1650 Newton meter. Now we say we want, um, um, uh, uh, we, uh, we want a starting torque of 1000 Newton meter plus 3%, yeah, uh, 6%. So, and you see, reaction arm, and here you see the curve, and here you see very good that uh, the, uh, the nut comes from the thread static friction into the thread sliding friction. And everything is documented by, by graphic and by a text report. I will show you the next video without reaction arm with the help of uh, the washer system. Yeah. Here again, yeah. The rotation angle starting torque is here, 1,000 newton meter. This, the nuts are still tightened by 1,650 newton meter. The rotation angle starting torque is 1,000 newton meter plus 6% angle. And here you see the curve, and the curve shows you that the nut comes from the fret static friction into the fret sliding friction. And everything is documented. Also, you see all curves, left, all curves with reaction arm, and right side, all curves with non-rotating safety washers. And here you see the text protocol. Let's see the first three colors. You see, after six degrees angle, uh, uh, the, the, the torque was 1,718, second one, 1,795, third one, 1,683. And now you can see the different torque. And, th and that means, yes, they have different lubricants. And if you combine this uh, uh, results with other measurements, for example, with the bolt of the length, then you see how your ball joint behaves in long term periods. The other, the, uh, the, um, now I want to introduce a very new model, yeah, because digitized mobile process reliable bolting can be done also by using modern cordless battery torque wrenches. Remember VDE 2862 part 2. The high lithium series 2 LST is the first battery wrench series with torque sense technology. That means this battery wrench series has a measured control factor and a measured monitoring factor. The LSD transducer inside independently measures strain, which is interpreted as torque. And the LSD motor independently measures the angle. Also, this tool or only this series has a snug torque function. The snug features is a torque function that is used to bring bolting surfaces into contact and alignment prior to precision tightening. For example, if you have um, an imperfect flange, you have a gap in between, first you have to bring the flange surface into an alignment before you start uh, to tighten them up. The 
snug operation accuracy is plus minus 10% and the torque operation is about plus minus 5% accurate. But also a video shows more. Here you see the, list, uh, the LST2, the LST0700. Here you see the 36 volt battery. And the LST0700 has a torque performance of up to uh, 945 Newton meter. The snug value can be is from 46 Newton meter up to 200 Newton meter. So that means you can start very deep with the torque. Here you see the snug, and the torque mode begins from 202 Newton meter up to 950 Newton meter. And here you can, uh, you can adjust the torque very clear, uh, very good uh, by the digital device. Also, if you recalibrate the tool, the accuracy of the torque is, is, is really incredible, plus minus 5%. Yeah. And now we want to do torque by angle. That means um, that uh, the rotation angle starting torque is 150 Newton meter. These 150 Newton meter are in the snug mode. And after that, the tool should turn the bolt, uh, the nut by 30 degrees. So you see, you set the snug mode, yeah, 150 Newton meter plus 30 degrees. All right, the nut is open. So we put the tool on here with reaction arm. Yeah. And now the tool turns the nut up to 150 Newton meter. And after that, the angle of rotation starts with 30 degrees, plus 30 degrees. And you see it was successful. And how accurate is this? It's a perfect result. And if you make a calibration of that, it's proved that it works accurate. Also, the, to uh, the torque and angle. Also, you get uh, a documentation. Yeah? Every single step, what you are doing with the LST tool will be documented. And you see here, uh, the snug torque, 150 Newton meter plus 30 degrees. And you see that the process was okay. Also, you see that we loosened the nut after it. Yeah? This is where the L stands for and T for tightening. This is the standard documentation without a documentation app. But in the near future, the documentation with an iTalk app will come. And here you see an example how it will look like. You have the iTalk app. And all the documentation can be transferred into the app. And from the app, you can put it into your computer or you can, uh, you can print it out. Yeah. So the LST tool has a brushless motor, an all aluminum housing, an intuitive user interface. Believe me, I did it by myself and I'm not the most patient person. That is really intuitive. It has a Bluetooth wireless technology and it's compatible with high torque nut and compatible with the high torque washer system. Now, what is the high torque washer system? The non rotating washer. Why it, is, why it is possible to work without reaction arm and without backup branches? You see, the problems of reaction arm and backup branches is you have to react somewhere and you can squeeze your fingers, you can hurt you. But also a reaction arm can damage your fret, can damage your, uh, your component. And, but also the backup bridge, you can squeeze your fingers and you need a lot of time to, to hammer it down. Yeah? So, and for that reason, there are non-rotating washers. And here you see there is an active system, which we call the Z-washer, and a passive system, which we call the backup washer. The active system, the Z-washer, 
ja, has, uh, has a neural underneath, ja, the non-rotating safety brochure, that's the active, and it has a neural underneath, ja, on the bottom of the direction of the surface for the app application, uh, and an external reaction profile, ja. So this neural avoids uh, uh, the washer by, from turning, and now uh, the reaction plate profile here, every tool, no matter if it's hydraulic, pneumatic, or battery tool, or electric tool, can react against this profile. The passive washer, which you see here, uh, is also a non-rotating round washer. This backup washer is knurled on both sides. Here is knurling and here is a knurling. Yeah. The backup washer avoids the bolt from turning during the tightening process. So there is no need for backup wrench. And believe me, one I have here original, you see. And this washer system we call the high top washer. It's for safer, faster and, and simpler. It makes the job safer, faster and simpler. And this one, you can, it, you don't need this. And also, you don't need this. Can you mean this two little things? Replace the backup, uh, the backup wrench and the reaction arm. Yes, and now that's it. Uh, here is my literature list. Last but not least, we hope we can do it because COVID-19 isn't finished yet, but from December 9 to, de to, to December 10, we will do the fourth Hamburger Verschraubungsforum uh, together with the company Reier. Reier is a big uh, boat supplier and with Kämpchen. Kämpchen is a big gasket manufacturer. It will happen in Hamburg, hopefully, from December 9 to December 10. And thank you very much for your attention. And I'm looking forward to hear from you. Thank you.